And welcome back for another episode. So let's have a quick peek at what's going on. So first of all, we did get some income from our trade deals. So that actually got rid of most of our loans now. And we are getting a decent bit of income now, monthly anyway. It's about 80, so... Around June, we'll probably have no debt at all. And our economic production modifier is already almost 90%, so that's pretty good. And we are going to be producing a fair bit of uh, things. We'll start producing some infrastructure in Nassau, because we plan on colonizing uh, one of the moons of the planet 16, which would be over there. And it does have some nice resources there. If we have a look, it has a lot of wood and gunpowder. And bronze and glass. I mean, glass is not that... The quantities for glass are not that huge. But we can then start bringing those resources back to Nassau, for example. Because Nassau is most likely going to run out of resources anyway, sooner or later. But yeah, then we can have a little bit of trade going between these two colonies instead of going always <laughs> over an ocean just to do some trading. And we might plan on doing some more raiding this year. We'll have to think about that, but it's a possibility that we could do. Now, we don't have much in terms of uh, boarding crews right now, so that's going to be a bit of a problem, or boarding parties rather than. Uh, we are going to be building some more, in, especially in Nassau. Now, we will also be getting the... Oh, right, we were getting low gravity infrastructure in Tunis right now. I believe we were going to set up some colonies in some of the asteroids there. Just so that we can get a little bit extra resources. For example, let's see, asteroid 18. Got a little bit of wood, brass, and food. I, I am pretty sure that there was something that had stone. Not sure if it was an asteroid or something. That one has stone. Asteroid 14. Well, that's not nearby, is it? No, it's over there. Okay. But uh, we did plan on setting some colonies over here with the forced labor mining camps that we already have there. And then, you know, we'll use them to get some resources over here so that we can actually start building a bit more things into it. Because uh, transporting, well it is possible to transport resources from Nassau over here for example, but it's going to be rather risky. Uh, we may have anchored especially the Spanish quite a bit and we'd have to go past Gibraltar and it's very likely that we'd get spotted along the way. Possibly, but I'm not entirely sure. And then in Palembang we'll probably try to get something that is going to be worth it. I mean, I suppose there's a few things that we could do over there, it's, uh, especially if we can get... Oh, that's another thing. We are going to be building a salvage vessel, so we'll be going to get a lot of resources from American East Coast, because there's a lot of wrecks there for some reason. I wonder why. But anyway, we'll be at least setting up one colony this year, so we can actually expand our empire a little bit, or rather the federation a little bit. And then, of course, we'll hopefully get the sale upgrades, or at least get the initial upgrades for sales. And then we need to design the mass and all that. That's going to take a little bit extra time. But hopefully we can start upgrading some of our ships later this year. And who knows, maybe if we salvage the ships that the other nations have left in the American East Coast, we might get some nice uh, technological data from there. Not necessarily, but it's a possibility, I reckon. But anyway, that's about it for the start here, so I will bring you guys back in just a few moments. At last, we have finally completed the research on the better sales, so now we started designing the new gunpowder storages and the new masts. Of course, it's going to take a long while to get all of these done, but I reckon that we'll get majority of them researched by the end of the year. There's few, but at least we'll get about half of them done. We'll try to get the sloop and frigate masts first, and then some of the gunpowder sources, especially the smaller ones. Because they will allow us to save up a little bit of the tonnage. At the same time, the new masts, some of them are actually going to be a tiny bit smaller, but they will still increase the total power. That, or they will increase the total speed that we'll be able to sail. And they, of course, will also be a little bit more fuel effective, so we'll be able to sail a little bit longer with our ships, because that's kind of our problem. Our holdings are so far spread around that we can't really do much between the holdings. Uh, not easily, anyway. We have now completed designing the sloop mast, so we've equipped that into new 6th and 7th grades. And the design doesn't change all that much, it's mostly the mast and a little bit extra fuel has been fitted now. 
because we did actually make the engine a time, or rather make the mass a take a little bit less room, it still increases the speed by about 20%, which is not bad in all honesty, but it also lets us uh, increase our range a little bit with the same fuel. And if we have a look at, for example, the new 7.3, I, I didn't update the servo vessel yet, but we might do that as well. But for the fighting 7.3, uh, the speed increase is a bit over a knot, and for the 6.8 it is... Uh, about one and a half knots, so it's not bad. And second, since the changes are so small, I'm pretty sure that we don't need to retool our shipyards for this. We have now managed to retool the shipyard, the third rate shipyard, which uh, will allow us now to build some third rates because previously we only could build fourth rate, sixth rate, and seventh rate. And we are retooling some of the seventh rates already. Not that they'll be necessarily hugely effective, but they might allow us to maybe harass some of the enemy shipping, or rather some of the other nation shipping for our benefit. And we have started building a third rate ship as well. Of course, it's going to take a long while before it's completed, and we are actually losing a ton of money right now, so our economic production modifier will probably go down a little bit, but hopefully not too much. Doing the retooling there, but we're not expanding the shipyards or anything like that because we know that our economy just cannot handle that yet. Our 6 ray shipyard has now been retooled for the updated 6 ray so we'll start auto-refitting the ships there to meet the new standards. There's several ships there that we do need to update. If we have a look at the ship design, so it would be quite a substantial upgrade in speed. I mean, the old one was pretty fast as well, but this one is going to be even faster. And of course, the weaponry is a bit limited. It only has uh, three sets of six pounders, so 12 cannons altogether. But yeah, it doesn't have a huge armament, but it has amazing speed. And you can spot enemies a bit farther away, I suppose. Although, well, actually not all that much, if I'm honest. Although the spy class is pretty good, so that will allow us to detect sails a bit further away at least. It's not a huge cost in terms of the ship itself, although the cost does increase a little bit there. Now, of course, we don't have a lot of resources. We're currently focusing on getting the better gunpowder storages and such. Honestly, hmm. Now, we could technically make another version of this with the updated gunpowder storage now that we actually have it. I would probably obsolete that one. So that way we could uh, utilize our ship a bit further, like we could maybe put in extra fuel or something like that for the extra range. I don't think we'll be able to save up enough uh, room to actually have another set of cannons in here, but that's alright. We don't need to have a huge weaponry, it's just uh, we need to have speed to run away from any enemy ships that might be armed. And we just need to have enough uh, weaponry that we can see uh, damage enemy ships so that we can capture them. Mostly the civilian ships, of course. 100 low gravity infrastructure have been completed in Tunis, which we will now start ferrying into the asteroid number 47, which does have some iron, which we do not have in Tunis itself. And it's 6,000? and it's accessibility 1, so we'll be getting a fair bit of minerals from here. What we'll do is we'll get some infrastructure there, just so that we can have at least a few of the forced labor mining camps. And that will be enough to build at least about 50 new mines, so that's going to be good. And we'll slowly start increasing, we'll mostly focus on getting the asteroids, because those are going to be easy. And what we might do actually is, uh, well actually, I don't we need a space station for that. Yeah, we don't have a space station here yet, we, so we can't build orbital miners here quite yet, but at least if we can get some regular mines here and then we'll start shipping out the force labor mining camps out a little bit. We've got quite a bit of them here, but they don't produce any tax, which is the problem. So we need to... but we can easily use those in like small colonies like that. And of course they do require a bit more infrastructure here actually, so how about we build some regular infrastructure, I don't know, 500 is probably enough for the time being. Now that is going to hinder our economy once again. We have been losing steadily money during this year, which is a bit of a problem, but I think that once we get a bit more of the mining going on and get some iron here, then we can start utilizing that 
to build regular mines here, which will then actually start providing some tax income. And we might actually be able to get the financial centers. They do have tar there, but we'd be able to get one. Okay, that's not a huge boost, but that might be useful. I mean, I don't think we ha we don't have any financial centers here, so that would actually be useful. Do we have any here? We got ten over here. That's actually something that we could think about. It may be building more financial centers here in the south just to keep our economy running because currently it's not running anyway. And that's another year, so let's have a quick look at what's going on. There's uh, first of all some things that I didn't uh, say during the actual episode is that uh, we did build a fair few ships here, so if we have a look at our Caribbean fleet. Uh, we have built some more 4th rate I believe, and 5th rate, and 6th rate, and all that sort of stuff. So we have been building a lot more ships. Did we? Oh right, we did get the salvager as well I believe, so that's something that we'll need to set up next year I think. We'll set up the support vessel to actually drag the salvager to the east coast, and we'll send some freighters there to be as a bit of a storage, and then what we can do is we can actually. That's a good idea. We'll set up like a few freighters there and uh, have some of them follow the salvager from a bit further away. Like have one in the fleet itself and then the others are behind following. And every, every time that the freighter goes full, then we'll send that one back to Nassau and we'll send in the next one to the fleet. And so forth, so we can keep uh, the operation going for much longer and get a trickle of uh, resources from there. But yeah, that's probably something that we'll do next year. Uh, we might also send in some of our ships then to raid in the Atlantic, for example, again. I think the Atlantic is probably the best place to do the raiding right now. Now, we do have some deals with the Dutch and the British, and the Ottomans did not raid any of those, but we might be raiding some other nations, mostly because we need the cash. And we still have about a thousand of debt. Of course, uh, if we have a quick look at the income, we will be getting a decent bit of income soon enough. And now that we're not building as many ships, we'll be able to probably fix our economy next year. And especially once we get the salvaging going on, but that's probably going to take a long while before the salvager is in position. And of course, our colony over here will be eventually set up. But we don't have the infrastructure ready for it yet. It requires some regular infrastructure. We've got 44 infrastructure actually, so we could potentially set up a colony there, but we have not done that yet. We'll see about that though. But setting a colony there, and of course we do have the colony here in the asteroid, which does have a little bit low gravity infrastructure already. We have a bit more here in Tunis waiting. We will slowly set up a colony there, and that is going to be providing a tiny bit of minerals, like we'll maybe get five uh, of those uh, forced labor mining camps or something like that here to provide the minerals that we need and ship them to Tunis and so forth. So that's going to be like a long term goal, of course. But slowly but surely, we'll upgrade the operation in Tunis. Of course, we have been sending in some uh, tankers towards Palembang, but it's going to take a while before we have enough fuel to actually, you know, feed everything here. The problem that we have is we are so far spread out that uh, our operations are a bit limited. Like each one of these uh, bases is essentially working on its own right now. And since uh, Palembang doesn't have a huge production, I mean we might be able to actually... Can we build low gravity infrastructure there? No. What about regular infrastructure? That we could. So we can find something that we could colonize in there, although I'm not entirely sure if we have freighters there either. We'll have to look at that, but we might be able to expand a little bit around that region as well and start setting up some colonies which can then provide the resources required for us to function. Mainly the food and iron, maybe stone. Those would be the ones that we need most here in Palembang. Just so that we can start setting up some actual manufacturing in here and start expanding in the region. But yeah, we definitely do need to set up some raids for Atlantic, I think for the next year. I mean, we do have the ships. The ships are now in pretty good shape, and that shouldn't really be a problem, and we can hopefully capture, I mean, we do have some more boarding parties available. We just need to remember that next time, just demask the enemy ships entirely, just so that they're not moving, so boarding is not going to be as costly. 
and then yeah, if, once they essentially stop entirely, then boarding in. Of course, it's going to be a bit expensive uh, fixing all the ships and all that, but we'll have to look how that goes next year. Hopefully, we can find something to raid. Of course, there's no guarantees of it, but it's a possibility. Now, in terms of ongoing research, we're still getting some of the mass upgrades, I and mean, we've already done the sloop and frigate, but then there's the ship of the line, sturdy ship of the line, trade ship, and flagship. And all of those are things that we kind of do need. It's going to take a while, and since we are very limited in our research capabilities, that's the only thing that we're currently doing. So, what we hope is that once we start salvaging the ships left in the American East Coast, we might be able to get some parts that we can then salvage and maybe get some new things for us. I'm not entirely sure if they have anything that we don't have on those ships. They might have something, but we'll see about that. But I'm sure that with the salvager we can then utilize it further later on and that should give us a nice advantage and of course, well, I wouldn't say advantage, but a way to catch up I'd say. But we also went through the ship movements more or less and the buildings that we're currently doing are very basic, like we're building the research facility in Palembang because that's something that we can do there because it's very limited in resources. It's still going to take a while before it's completed so that's not a big deal and in Caribbean we're building some regular stuff. We really need to start building some financial centers though because our economy is crap right now. In terms of survey, we surveyed American East Coast already some time ago. We've been surveying a little bit of Panama, although it's mostly been the asteroid belt around the system, or the edges of the zone rather than the actual port locations there, so that's going to be something that will still take some time, but we'll get that fixed eventually. And of course, uh, West Mediterranean, we've surveyed most of it. We've done a little bit of surveying Gulf of Cadiz, but we sent the fleet back to overhaul and all that sort of stuff. And then in Malacca, we've done a little bit of surveying there, but we still have about half of it unsurveyed. So that's also a bit of a challenge there. But the problem over there was mostly that the survey ship that we had around there, I think we had one or two, I don't remember anymore, but it tried to go all the way to North Pacific and uh, Panama and Caribbean to refuel. So it was uh, stuck in North Pacific for a while, but we did manage to send it back now, so it should be alright. And yeah, we don't have a huge amount of colonies. We did go through our initial colonial plans. Well, I'll look between the episodes a little bit. Potential colonization locations in Malacca Straits, for example. If there's anything that we could actually start colonizing with regular infrastructure, that would provide us some minerals. Because we do have some extra... Well, I wouldn't say extra, but we do have some mines that we could spare from Palembang itself. And then that would allow another colony to set up more or less and then slowly but surely expand. If we could have one extra colony on each of the zones that we currently inhabit, that would be nice. That would allow our civilian shipping to do a bit more stuff locally instead of always going at least across one ocean, sometimes two. Speaking of civilian shipping, we have currently two colony ships and six freighters. And I believe most of these are old. Like they, they have been around for a while now, but they have done a little bit trading at least. Like over here they... Oh, that was in December. I, I see. We got 60 from trading precious metals in Palembang, which is not bad. Not bad at all. I believe they, I believe they will be taking some stuff from uh, Palembang back to Nassau. And of course, we don't have any civilian mining colonies yet, but that's alright. And with our trade deals, we should be able to get potentially all of the debt paid this year, or by the start of next year, actually. Because we do have three trade deals, yeah, I we'll have positive money. Oh, that's jolly good. But yeah, all in all, this year was rather passive for us. We did expand our fleet, though, so that's good. And we'll be able to utilize the new ships a bit more next year, hopefully. But that was it for this episode, so thank you very much for watching, and until next time, bye-bye.